Okay everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if it's possible if you can actually drop a coin and get it to land on its side and stay there. So I'm able to do it by just setting it there, but what about if I drop it? Well I got this idea because one of the channels I subscribe to is called The Curiosity Show. It's actually just reruns of an educational show that runs in Australia in like the 1970s. But recently, the video that they just posted was seeing if you could drop a coin on its edge. And so one of the guys tries a lot, and no matter what he does, he can't get the coin to drop on its edge. Even doing it from a really low height, you can't really get it. Ooh, almost right there. So the trick they came up with on the Curiosity Show was just to put it next to a bottle and get the back of it wet and then drop it and it stays standing up. So I thought that I would take it a step further and see if I can really learn to drop a coin on its end. So I practiced and practiced and here's what happened. Okay. Here goes the final test. Three, two, one. <laughs> yes, it worked. Okay, so how was I actually achieving this? Well, I'm doing it with the help of a magnetic field. So these are actually steel pennies, and so they're ferromagnetic. And so they respond to a magnetic field. And what ferromagnets do is they become their own magnet themselves once they're put in a magnetic field. And so under the table here, I have a magnet, my giant neodymium magnet. And so it has a really strong magnetic field that can go through this whole depth here and still affect the coin. You can see I can't even really knock it over. But why does it stay up? Well, this is becoming its own magnet because it's inducing its own magnetic field in the coin. And so this becomes the north pole and this is the south pole. And this points to the north pole of the magnet. And so it stacks up in a straight line. In fact, no matter what I do here, it just pops back up. And see how they now affect each other because they're now magnetic themselves. You can see that they always align so that their opposite fields are facing towards each other. They never attract. So in playing with these magnets, what's weird is you'll notice that no matter how many coins I put on there, the coin always acts like it itself is a magnet. So it has a north and a south pole. Even if that, I cut that coin in half, those two new halves would now become a north and a south pole and they would repel each other. And then if I cut those in half, they would now repel each other. And even if I did that same thing to a magnet, that would happen. If you have a magnet and break it in half, it will now act as though those are two independent magnets with a north and a south pole. And so the part where you broke it will be attracted to each other because there's a north and a south pole together. But if you flip them around, they'll repel each other. So the weird thing about magnets is that no matter how many times you break them in half, they still always have two ends of them. So there's always two poles to a magnet no matter what. And that's always bugged physicists for a really long time because there's no way to isolate one pole of a magnet. Whereas for the electric field, you can isolate single charges as a positive charge and a negative charge. But for magnets, there's no way to have a single monopole magnet. They're always dipole. 
And this, uh, this has always bugged physicists because electromagnetism is usually symmetrical, meaning that what applies for electric fields can usually be, usually be applied for magnetic fields. Now, quantum mechanics predicts that monopoles can exist, but we've never found them in nature. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.